Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Dave. Today we're going to be looking at a very classic geometry problem from Japan. The goal of this problem is to find the radius of the smallest circle, given that all three circles are tangent to each other and tangent to a common baseline, as we see in the problem. In other words, given this information, if we know the blue and the red radius, what is the radius of the smallest circle? First, a little bit of historical background. During the Edo period, which lasted from 1603 to 1868 in Japan, there was an interesting practice of hanging geometric problems painted on wooden tablets in Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples. This was a form of recreational mathematics, and such tablets were known as sangaku, meaning calculation tablets, and they were hung in the shrines and temples, sometimes as offering to deities, but often as challenges to fellow congregants. Literate people of all social classes produced sangaku. At one time, there were possibly thousands of problems that were in circulation. However, today about 900 unique problems survive. And today we will be looking at one such problem, which is very useful because it can be used to derive solutions for other questions. And here at the bottom of this screen, we see examples of two problems that were originally Put in the temples. On to the question. If we know that the radius of the larger circle C1 is 3 inches and that the radius of the second largest circle C2 is 2 inches, what then is the radius of the smallest circle? At this point I think it is prudent to try and break down the question. As the great mathematician George Polya once said, if you can't solve a problem, then there is an easier problem that you can solve. Find it. So in this case, our simpler problem will be to look at the case where we have only two circles, O1 and O2. And hopefully this will shed some light on what to do when we have more than one circle or more than two circles. So the first thing we will do to solve the case where there are two circles is to drop down a perpendicular from O1 to the baseline. And we will do the same thing for O2. We will label the points where these perpendiculars intersect as A and B respectively. We will also label the radius so circle O1 has a radius of R1. Circle O2 has a radius of R2. Next, you will draw a horizontal line parallel to segment AB that intersects OA at a right angle. This will enable us to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, certainly some form of the Pythagorean theorem would have been known in Japan in 1820. So using this would not be an, an anachronism. So to use the Pythagorean theorem, we will write that O1P squared plus the length of the segment O2P squared is equal to the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the length of the segment O2, O1. However, as we can see, OP is simply the difference in length between R1 and R2. So we can write that O1P squared is simply the quantity R1 minus R2 squared. Likewise, the hypotenuse O2, O1 is the quantity R1 plus R2 squared. We can now expand these terms and we would get R1 squared minus 2 times R1 R2 plus R2 squared plus 
the length of the segment O2 P squared is equal to R1 squared plus 2 times R1 R2 plus R2 squared. Now we can cancel out the like terms on both sides and after rearranging we would get the relationship 4 times R1 times R2 is equal to AB squared. We will now use this information to solve the case with three circles. And here is the case with three circles rather than two. First, we will make some annotations on our diagram here in order to make it a little bit easier for us to see the relationships between the circles. First, we will connect C1 to C2 and we will indicate the radii of each circle. So circle C1 has a radius of R1 and circle C2 has a radius of R2. Next, we will drop down perpendicular lines from C1 and C2 down to the baseline. We will label these points A and B. We can also do the same thing for C3 and we can label this point A prime. We can now draw a line parallel to A A prime from point C3 that intersects the segment C1 A at 90 degrees. We will do the same thing on the other side from C3 to the perpendicular line C2 B. We will label these two points P1 and P2. Next, we will connect C1 with C3 and C2 with C3. We will indicate the radius. So once again, C1 has a radius of R1 and C2 has a radius of R2. And of course, circle C3 has a radius of R3. Now, because all three of these circles are tangent to each other, and they're also tangent to the baseline, we can use the same relationship that we found in the previous slide. And we can write down these three relationships. 4 times R1 times R2 is equal to C1 P2 squared. 4 times R1 times R3 is equal to P1 C3 squared. And 4 times R2 R3 is equal to C2 P3 squared. However, P1 P2 is simply equal to P1 C3 plus C2 P3. This allows us to write the following relationship once we take the square root of the equations that are boxed in at the top. The square root of the quantity 4 times R1 R2 is equal to the square root of the quantity 4 times R1 R3 plus the square root of the quantity 4 times R2 R3. Now we can clean this up a little bit by dividing through by the square root of 4 times R1 R2 R3. If we do this we get a very elegant relationship we find that the 1 over the square root of R3 is equal to 1 over the square root of R2 plus 1 over the square root of R1. Keeping this relationship in mind, all we have to do at this point is to reinsert the values that they gave us originally. In the original question, they told us that R1 had a length of 3 inches and R2 had a radius of 2 inches. So plugging in these numbers we get 1 over R3 is equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over the square root of 6. When we square both sides we get 1 over R3 is equal to 2 plus 2 times the square root of 6 plus 3 all over 6. And taking the reciprocal, we get R3 is equal to 
6 over 5 plus 2 over the square root of 6. At this point, we are technically done. However, some math instructors like it if you rationalize the denominator. So that's what we'll do here. We have that the square root of R3 is equal to 6 over the quantity 5 plus 2 times the square root of 6. And if we multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by 5 minus 2 times the square root of 6, we would get that R3 is equal to 30 minus 12 times the square root of 6 as an exact answer. And if you wanted an approximate answer, you would get that R3 is approximately equal to 0 0.606 inches. So this is the final answer. If you've liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.